What's up, everyone? It's been a while since I've done a video. Today, I'm doing a mini episode with Annapolis rock band Fire Escape. They just put out an EP called Radiator, and I'm going to talk to them about that and talk to them about how they got started, what they've been up to, and where they are going. Hey, what's going on? Hi. You in the studio? Uh, we're at my house. Uh, oh, okay. It's home studio. Cool. Sweet, because it's really good sound. Usually when I talk to people, it's not, and so this is nice. So I appreciate the good sound. <laughs> um, all right, so you guys are in a band called Fire Escape. Um, can you just kind of introduce yourselves and let us know how the band got started and when it got started? Yeah, so my name is Damien. Um, I'm a I'm the frontman guitarist singer. Um, I started the band with Kane here in uh, 2020. Yep, uh, I'm Kane. I'm the drummer, although I'm also kind of the lead songwriter. Uh, I play guitar on a couple tracks on the EP, but for the most part, I'll be behind the drums. Um, I'm Lane. I'm the bassist. I am not an original member of this band. So I was not part of the forming process, but I do play a lot of bass and I sing sometimes too. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, we started the band in like March of 2020. Uh, it was like just an idea between me and Damien. There was, there was originally uh, another guitarist named Sean in our band and he, uh, he was friends with Damien and uh, we were hanging out uh, during school in some biology classroom or something. I think so. And uh, uh, Damien mentioned to me that he played guitar, uh, and we had jammed a couple of times on our own. And I was like, oh, maybe we could do something together. And that's pretty much how it started. Awesome. Very cool. Um, so were you guys without a bass player until Lane came in? or? Uh, sort of. It was like either Damien or Sean played bass, and sometimes nobody played bass, and there were two guitars. Cool. Lane, what kind of bass do you play? I'm a bass player too. That's why. Um that's why I care more about I you than the other one. I play one of Kane's, but at home I have this uh active bass that I really like. Cool. I don't remember what brand or name it is because I've had it for like a really long time gotcha. since I was like twelve. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's just it's real nice. <laughs> cool. Um, I see your Nirvana t Nirvana t shirt. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and listening to, uh, the EP that I listened to it on Bandcamp. I know you can get it in a bunch of other places as well. Uh, we'll talk about where we could find you all like towards the end of the interview, but what are some of your influences? Cause I did, I definitely caught a lot of Nirvana type vibes, which I loved because that was like one of the first rock bands that I ever got into like a very long time ago. Um, so talk about your influences, each of you and like, you know, what are some of the first bands you kind of fell in love with? And when you write, who do you kind of have in mind? Yeah, well, um, right now, I mean, it was it was different in the beginning. In the beginning, when we started the band, I, I really did love Nirvana, and they were just really everything that I lived and breathed was Nirvana. <laughs> and a lot of Bush, too. A lot of Bush, too. Okay. Yeah, just anything anything from that time. Um, and that really influenced our early writing and, and most of the songs on the EP, ultimately. But, but now I'd say that my biggest influence is probably a band called Failure out of Los Angeles, it's like okay. kind of space rock, but mostly grunge, and they've just become massive influence on me. That's mostly who I think about when I write. Yeah, failure is definitely an influence on me. Uh, my some of my other biggest influences are the Smashing Pumpkins. They're my favorite band. Mm -hmm. uh, Sunny Day Real Estate. Nice. Uh, Soundgarden and Local H also played a pretty good role in influencing the style of the band as well. Cool. Um, for me, it's really all over the place, um, but obviously Nirvana is a pretty big one. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I am really influenced with my bass from like Muse and Primus. Oh, nice. Um, and then like a lot of like the vocals that I come up with is either Blondie or System of a Down. Cool. Those are all rad bands. Um... Yeah, Primus is just, I could watch him play bass all day. It's just, he's such a <laughs> funky guy on stage and stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, what was the writing process like for the EP? How long did it take to write? And um, 
and record? How long did it take to record as well? So most of the songs we wrote last year, uh, I think all uh, Ramoon, the second track, and Highland, the last track, were kind of jammed out between me and Damien. Okay. Uh, Ramoon actually was written on Halloween, which is a nice, nice. fun fact. Yeah. Uh, Lane wrote Anaphylaxis basically all on her own. I just wrote it like one time at practice, just completely randomly. Yeah. And then you guys ended up liking it and it became a thing. Sweet. And uh, Life in a Jar is like one of the few songs we uh, play and have been working on that's like from the earliest incarnation of the band. Like that's the only song we really play that's from 2020 when the band formed. Cool. Yeah, a lot of a lot of our songs actually started out as acoustic songs. Even the heavy ones started out as acoustic songs, which is kind of, I, I don't know, it's kind of yeah. ironic, I guess, because they ended up, like a lot of them ended up being really heavy. Like, um, there's this one track that's not on the EP, but we wrote it on acoustic, and it's like this really heavy, like guitar driven thing with like chromatics and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't, it started out as an acoustics song. So we, a lot of our songs have been written acoustically, and that's kind of like, mainly where we come up with our ideas is like a lot of the time we sit in like a circle with acoustic guitars and we just nice. kind of jam stuff out yeah cool. and uh as far as the actual recording went uh most of the album was recorded uh, march and april of this year 2022 uh the last uh track that was recorded ramoon was recorded in may because okay. there was some scheduling conflicts and we recorded that one live gotcha cool um since you guys formed basically like so you formed pretty much during covid really like during that first year of like when things were really tight and restricted oh yeah um, our i'm pretty sure our first band practice was like the day before the uh quarantine started oh really okay have you guys been able to to get out and play much because of that or uh uh they have uh, i sure. have played a lot of places because i'm in a school of rock so oh, cool okay I go out and I play shows like a lot. Nice. Yeah, I've, I've played. I've I've played like some minor stuff, mostly just where I would like be at a party or something, and I'd grab right. an acoustic and just play like a song or two, mostly a cover. But like, as a band, we've only really played. We've had a we had our debut gig back in June of this year at our high school, oh, cool. um, okay. in the auditorium. It was just an after school gig, mostly friends, but it was you know it was really fun, and that's mostly where we've played. But we're, you know, we're thinking about our options. Yeah, that's cool. I think you should have um, plenty of options coming up. I think your sound works really well for um, this area too, because there are a lot of people who are into like that kind of rock. And I think, um, you know, for me being part of a punk band, The Ailments, which I know you're familiar with, um, there's no venues. <laughs> and Annapolis used to have like one punk venue. Um, and that's kind of like dead now too, I think. But um I think I think your style of music will um, gain a much wider audience. I think you'll have a lot more options uh, going forward, places to play. What's um, have you guys like as far as concerts are concerned in general? Like, do you have a, a one concert that you've been to that kind of blew you away? Like your most memorable concert or show? Uh, I mean, me personally, yeah, it's almost going to sound cliche at this <laughs> point because of how much I've talked them up already, but. I recently, with uh, Kane, actually, we both went and saw Failure yeah. uh, in Baltimore. They played recently at the Baltimore Soundstage, and that was an incredible concert. I, I mean, I loved it. That was probably the most fun I've ever had at a concert before, cool. because most of the concerts I've been to were just my parents with music that they liked. Yeah, yeah. And the music they like isn't always the music I like. So, mm -hmm. um, But that was, that was really fun for me. Yeah, Very cool. uh, I think my favorite concert that I've been to and the one that I enjoyed the most was earlier this year. I can't remember when exactly, but I saw a, uh, a smaller band called Subsonic Eye at the DC-9. Oh, nice. Baltimore. And uh, they're, uh, they're like an indie rock band, but they're from Singapore. And it was their first uh, U.S. tour. And it was really great seeing them. And they have a really great sound that you can just get totally lost in the noise and it cool. translates really well into a live setting that's awesome um for me there are two uh one was the green day weezer fallout boy hell omega tour because i nice. weaseled my way up to the front <laughs> and it was nice. awesome 
Cool. And then the other one was actually a concert that School of Rock did with a bunch of other bands. And so then it was all like kids my age that were all mm -hmm. playing things. And it was nice. awesome. And like we were all like supporting each other and everything. And Very it was cool. cool to see like kids my age and like me play. Yeah, that's really cool. Awesome. What are you guys uh, currently listening to? Like if you were to put your headphones on and just go for a walk or something, what's currently, what are you currently spinning? Uh, I've been getting really into Guided by Voices. Oh, wow. Which, okay. Uh, they're they're kind of, they're cool. I've, I've been getting, like, I got a couple albums of theirs, and some of that I like, some of that I don't really like, but I've mm -hmm. been getting into the stuff that I really like by them. Yeah. And then the other big one is uh, Green River, one of the oldest pioneers of grunge. They have a really great sound. Cool. They're cool. Yeah, um, I mean, for me, you know, like, obviously Nirvana, the Toadies, love that band, you know, out of Texas. Um, Barlow, which is a band that you turned me on to. Um, Barlow. Yeah, Barlow, sorry. Shoegaze kind of type band, really mm -hmm. like their stuff. I've been getting into their stuff more recently because of Kane's recommendations. Um, obviously, Failure, you know, a, a band called Turnstile, which is actually from Baltimore. Um, yeah, you've yeah, probably I know heard guys. of them. Yeah. They're very popular now. Yeah. And, um, you know, hardcore, hard rock and hardcore punk. I love them, too. So stuff like that. Cool. Um, for me, I've been listening to a lot of, like, bass-heavy bands recently because I'm very yeah. partial to really good bass lines. So I've been yeah. listening to, like, a lot of Muse. I've been listening to a lot of System of a Down. I've been listening to a lot of Primus. And especially I've been listening to a lot of Rage Against the Machine. Nice. Yeah, those, yeah, the Rage Against the Machine stuff. Those bass lines are killer. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. Um, <clears throat> so do you want to, I'm going to play a song. Um, once I edit this all out, um, I'm going to put one of your songs, if you don't mind in the, into the show. Um, do you have a particular song that you'd want to play? Um, uh, I don't have any in mind. Uh, do either of you? Probably either. Highland or Anaphylaxis? Yeah. yeah. Hi Highland or Anaphylaxis, I guess. Yeah. One okay. of the two. Okay, cool. Um, let's go. Let's go with Highlander and just talk about that song, what it's about, and uh, what went into writing it. All right. So that came from like me and Damien just jamming. I, mm -hmm. uh, Damien was on drums, which is interesting because yeah. he, he usually does not play drums, <laughs> and I was on guitar, cool. and uh, we were just messing around. I just got, recently got a new fuzz pedal, and it sounded really nice with the sound. And uh, we were just jamming it out, and there was this one riff, like, there's these two riffs, kind of, that are now part of Highland that we kind of just came up with on the spot. And it was actually, I think it was Damien who kind of caused me to, to do that, because he, like, he came up with, like, a drum opening, which is the drum opening of Highland, mm -hmm. and that kind of kick-started the whole thing. Then we, uh, we worked on it as a three-piece, and... Uh, and then we all three of us kind of worked yeah. out the lyrics way later. Yeah. Worked out the lyrics, and then I got the like backing vocal thing, like yeah. in the chorus. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The the back vocal the backing vocal on the EP um, that Lane performed, we came up with quite a bit later after we had already yeah. written most of the song. That was kind of one of the like kind of the icing on the cake. Awesome. Yeah, I love uh, bands with with a female member, especially when it comes to backup vocals, because you can really do a lot of things that a lot of bands can't do. Uh, vocally yeah. it sounds really cool sounds it's a good sound a lot of people uh, that we've talked to that that have been i'm sorry i didn't mean to go, no, no, let's go ahead a it's lot fine. of people that we've talked to about like when they say when they find out that we have like a, a female bass player they're always like mm. oh that's so cool you know i don't see a lot of bands doing that nowadays yeah. and like it's like it's cool that you're being like inclusive or right you know whatever you'd want to call it and it's nice you know because especially because you know she's such a good singer yeah totally yeah it's awesome um all right so who would be on your if you were to construct a Mount Rushmore of your favorite like artists, who would be on your mountain? And I, you get a crazy horse, so you get five people. So, Ooh. so it's got to be it's got to be music related, but it can be any genre, any five people that you consider. If we're worthy going of Mount Rushmore by, status, if we're going by specific musicians, I think. Jimmy Chamberlain from the Smashing Pumpkins, absolutely. Mm -hmm. He's my favorite drummer. Nate Mandel from Sunday Day Real Estate. Chris cool. Cornell uh, from Soundgarden. And uh, I don't know. 
like even though i play guitar a lot i don't really like have any guitar idols really mm -hmm. uh although i really like david pajo from slint he's a good cool. uh, guitarist and uh uh let's just throw dave Grohl in there for fun <laughs> i think mine would probably be um darren malakian um les claypool nice. um darcy from smashing pumpkins um uh, oh my god i just forgot the vocalist of rage's name uh, i think it's <laughs> zach taylor Rosa. Yes, Zach. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Zach. Uh, and then last, uh, I think it would be, um, oh, I can't think of one. I just had it. <laughs> oh, Lane Staley. Cool. Okay. Yeah, for me, I'd say um, one person that's really cool and inspirational when it comes to music is Jimmy Haha. Uh, because oh, yeah. he's actually, you know, he's from here. And so I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting him many times. And so it's, it's cool to see a musician, especially from your local area and your mm -hmm. place of birth that plays similar music to you, that is just kind of a continuous inspiration. Um, so he's definitely up there, Kurt Cobain. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say also Ken Andrews from Failure, the front man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Greg Edwards as well, the bassist of Failure, because he just... A lot of his, I mean, I just keep, I just keep citing him. But, <laughs> it's all but, good. <laughs> good reason. Yeah, the thing is, yeah. is he, you know, the thing about Greg is he, his bass lines and his guitar parts that he came up with, even if he wasn't always, you know, the front man or he wasn't singing and stuff, he was just as instrumental to the sound. And I think that that's really speaks to how cool it can be when a band has multiple members all working together to construct the sound instead of just one guy making all the decisions you can yeah. come up with so much more cool stuff when everyone's kind of working together yeah totally yeah. nice all right so wait once that was only four you get one more yeah i'd say after that probably um chris cornell could go up there too but i don't know uh steve albini Okay, cool. Yeah, he, he'll go up there. Nice. I like him. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the things I do besides playing in the elements and doing uh, the show, like I, I've been doing like a lot of promoting of shows lately. So one of the things I have to deal with are writers from bands that mm -hmm. are on tour send me weird suggestions of things that they must have in the green room. Um, it's usually pretty normal. Um, sometimes it's really annoying. Uh, you kind of just have to deal with it. So when you guys make it big, would you have any wacky green room requests for writers? Like, you know, I think it was, who was it that only wanted green M&Ms? Is that Led Zeppelin? <laughs> I don't know. I forget. But like, well, it is yeah. a green room. Like the yeah. <laughs> What's a must have? Must have. I feel like I would want like a mini fridge in there. Like, yeah with just like some soda or like totally. some cold drinks nice yeah most venues like as good as they can be like they don't have that nice selection of soda that like mm -hmm. 7-eleven has i guess yeah you know, like it's usually just like you want coke or sprite or right, right. Ginger <laughs> yeah yeah but you can really branch out if you just bring your own stuff. yeah totally uh any good tv show on hand that i could watch in the meantime i don't know like Nice. Sopranos or regular show. I would want a beanbag in there. <laughs> bean bag. Nice. I want there you a beanbag. Yeah. yeah. This is so cool. A hammock too. Oh, a oh, hammock. A hammock. Ceiling hammock. Ceiling hammock. We can't forget the hammock. That's, That's so yeah. fancy. So hammocks, beanbags, nice selection of soda, and a TV yeah. with the Sopranos going. Yes. yes. Correct. That's not bad. Yes. That's not bad. That is the ideal. Ideal green room. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> um. All right, so what, what's coming? What's up? What's up next for you guys? Um, as far as playing out and shows and like kind of supporting the EP, what are some of the things you have planned up for the next, I don't know, few months or whatever? So uh, we do plan on uh, playing some more gigs soon. Uh, we definitely have the ability to and some connections that could get us to play some shows. But uh, other band stuff, we're planning a uh, full-length album mm -hmm. uh, in the future. Nice. And uh, hopefully we'll have a single out by the end of the year, maybe even two. Who knows? Cool. Uh, and uh, 
yeah cool that's basically yeah, yeah that's most and i think that's as far as we've planned yeah, yeah we're not really we're not trying to put too much thought into yeah. it. we're just kind of yeah, yeah. doing rehearsals and improving our craft yeah. and supporting the ep that's good that's good yeah awesome so where could everybody find you on the internet everywhere <laughs> everywhere pretty much yeah, yeah we're, we're on all major streaming platforms spotify apple music itunes bandcamp especially Bandcamp because that's the one that most directly benefits us mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That, that would really uh, any yeah. support on Bandcamp is is greatly appreciated yep. we would like that really helps us out yeah I think we're on Amazon Music too we I are that's I, crazy. I think I saw us on there too I, I could be wrong but oh yeah. yeah I think we are we're pretty much everywhere yeah nice very cool yeah the Bandcamp is the one that I always push when I talk to bands like um because mm -hmm. yeah you're right I mean that's you definitely see the most um you know help from that site as opposed yeah. to like the quarter of a penny, if you play yeah. a million yeah, songs, definitely. played on this. Song. Um, all right, cool. Hey, thanks a lot for doing this, guys. And um, you know, in the future, if you have anything come out, let me know, and we could do another one of these. I'm, but yeah, but thanks so much. Awesome. Of course, yeah. It's an thanks honor. for having thanks us. Thanks for having us. It's, yeah, it's an honor cool. and a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, take care, guys. You too. Thank you. You all too. Right. Bye. Bye.